on this episode of the John 1911 podcast. FEG high power. I broke a Spaz 12 shotgun. Holster makers that troll each other. And yes, we are making more videos. Good morning, everybody. This is Marky and Freeze, and this is episode 53 of the John 1911 podcast. How's it going, Freeze? Going fine. You, I was just saying before we uh, turned on the uh, turned on the uh, went live here. Uh, you sounded a little whipped. You said you've had a pretty pretty uh, long week. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's just been it's just been long. Yeah, that's all. Lots going on. So I've got stuff going on too. So I I already had two cups of coffee and I'm, I just cracked open a bottle of crack, which for our regulars will know that's speed stack. Uh, it's kind of late. It's about ten thirty in the morning. So. Well, I guess before we get into some of the stuff we were going to talk about, what in the hell happened last night in Berkeley with uh, with uh, with Milo? Have you followed any of this? Yeah, I was uh, I was pretty much watching it on uh, on Fox last night as it was happening. <laughs> I was asleep. So <sighs> did people get? Was okay. I heard. I've heard like you know gunfire supposedly and what I didn't I didn't hear gunfire. I mean there was fireworks and some some like they caught a bunch of shit on fire and they pepper sprayed a few you know pro Milo pro Trump Trump people there. Um, I saw I th- I saw a, a it was it was um, I mean I, I couldn't hear the audio but there was. Um, video of uh protesters chasing people down the street with metal pipes knocking people out and these people i mean you could tell just one dude you were like yeah that dude's out you see that um yeah i saw a couple of attacks you know and they hauled some people off to the hospital you know um it, you know look it's it's typical of what's been going on for the last several years I mean, these little left-leaning snowflakes think that they can get up there and protest about free speech and how God is good and and everything's right in the world. But if you don't believe in us, you know, fuck you, we're going to beat the shit out of you and basically disregard your constitutional rights because you're wrong and we're right. And look, I'm just tired of it. I think a lot of people are tired of it, but maybe we should stop using the phrase snowflake because they're not snowflakes. These are anarchists. Yeah, these are violent people. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, whatever. Um, but you know what, though? <clears throat> uh, Trump tweeted, I don't know if it was late last night or early this morning, <clears throat> but he tweeted that, um, you know, uh, you know, if, Berkeley can't, uh, you know, uh, you know, something along the lines of, you know, if Berkeley can't, uh, you know, recognize free speech, no federal funding for them. You know, I don't know if that's just a generic off the cuff, you know, tweet or, but, you know, I mean, what we need to do is start hitting these people where it, where it hurts, you know, and, and where do you start in a place like California? You hit them in the pocketbook because they're all freaking broke anyway. Yeah. You know, I had, I had posted something about this on Facebook last night or yesterday, yesterday, I think it was, you know, all these people, supposedly California is going to secede and you know, that that's fine. And you know, I'm not, we don't need to get into the reasons why that's not going to happen, but I said, you know, the, the hypothetical was, okay, let's just say that they do. Let's just say this happens. You know, it, it, California gets away with a lot of their financial malfeasance because they don't they don't have to be responsible to actually, you know, s- you know, square up a, a, a um, square up a, a budget. And, you know, they get a lot of money from the federal government. So, you know, I mean, it would just be really interesting to see a a state like California break away from the United States. They're no longer they're no longer um, getting federal funds, highway funds. They're no longer getting military funds for those military bases. I mean, also, by the way, we wouldn't be giving up those military bases. Um, And, you know, how would they be paying for their own, you know, with the California military? 
you know, and you know, even even taking it to its logical conclusion, l- just look at who the people are in California. It would take but a few years if the Republic of California actually existed, you know, for China to have basing rights in California or Iran to be able to station missiles in California. I mean, they would, you know, th- they're so crazy out there that they would do some crazy bullshit like that. You know? uh, they would they would need to for money because, you know, uh, you know, a third of the people out there are on government assistance. And what's going to happen when, uh, you know, when the government assistance is cut off and a third of the people have no viable income? Well, it was interesting because a guy rolled in and he, you know, he made a really interesting point and I didn't have an answer. So I just went through a thought process, you know, to think about it. He's, you know. Like whatever his argument was, California by itself is X, you know, whatever it is, X, you know, X size economy in the world. Yeah, that's well. But here was here was the thought process. I said, okay, that that is that is likely true. However, if you take California and you look at kind of how they're set up, first of all, how many of these companies like Apple or I don't know uh, how many tech companies would actually want to not be in the United States. Like how many of them would actually be forced to pick up and leave and all move to Portland, Oregon, or something? And all then, of them. And then, and then there was the argument. Okay, look at look at the port in Long Beach, California. Okay, it's probably the busiest port in the United States, if not one of the busiest in the world. And that has to contribute greatly. All of that kind of activity and then, you know, secondary, third level, fourth level activity has to contribute a lot to California's economic numbers. But that port feeds the United States. All that stuff isn't sold in California. Well, if that port's no longer in the United States, does all of that economic activity shift up to Portland or shift up to the Seattle or all the, one of these ports that are still in America? What does that do to these numbers? I mean, this is all such pie in the sky. Bullshit. Well, okay, let, let's let's talk about these numbers. Um, you've got Hollywood out there in California where they make all the movies, and that that contributes greatly to their, you know, to to that number. Okay, now so California breaks away, and um, now and then the uh, United States says, okay. Um, you can't film any movies in any other part of the United States other than California. We're putting a whole embargo on Hollywood, and we're not going to allow any of the movies to be seen. Well, Hollywood collapses, and there's a big. I mean, you know, look. I mean, if we're going to talk about fantasy, let's go. You know, let's go there as well. Well, it's not even to you know the government doing anything. Okay, just think about this because you know, let's say if California were to secede from the union it's secede um there's a lot of people get incorrect on the internet um not succeed (laughs) um forget government to government problems what would happen it would be the same thing that you would see in um you're seeing in berkeley last night you would see all of these mainstream california people, institutions, and whatever, they would all start showing their true colors, and then they'd all start shitting on America and what they really think of this country. And what would happen, you know, if basically California breaks away? They're not going to be like, oh, yay, we respect you, America. It would be a big fu- – they would, it would, they would go nuts and say and do all kinds of crazy stuff. They would piss off every, every you know – uh you know, American loving citizen in the rest of the country. And very quickly, there would be this stratification of, wait a minute, you're actor X and you stayed in California and you're making these movies in Hollywood in this anti-American place. We're not going to be watching your movies. I mean, people be like, oh, where was that movie made? Oh, yeah. And the, the new in Savannah, Georgia, is the new Hollywood. That's where everybody's at now. Or Orlando is the new Hollywood. Are you an Orlando actor or are you a Hollywood actor? I mean, you know, it, people would get – because here's the thing. California will not behave rationally if if this were to happen. They would do and say stuff that would just 
It would be just like it would be just like Berkeley last night. Yeah, well, they don't they don't do or behave rationally now. Why why would you expect them to do anything rational if they if they were able to break away? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's you know, but it, it's interesting. You know, it, it is interesting. I mean, we're not going to give up. San Diego. We're not going to give up Pendleton. We're not going to give up Vandenberg. A lot of people don't realize Van- about how important Vandenberg is. Vandenberg's very important, just for the defense of the country from missile attack and a lot of our military, you know, weapons testing. I mean, you know, there's just all kinds of stuff that, you know, just logically is not gonna not gonna, you know, work out. But you know, it's uh, it is it is what it is. So. I wanted one thing I've noticed, Freeze, is we have not been really discussing. We have not been paying enough attention in the podcast to the blog page. Like we don't ever really dis- we haven't discussed a whole lot from the blog page in a while. Um, you had uh, done a write up on a high power that you know we we posted on the blog page and i dude i, I gotta hand it to you the pictures you took i thought they looked great i mean you did a good job with that um yeah i yeah i didn't do anything special i'm just yeah, you know yeah. i mean you know you're not used to taking pictures and you've been you've know, been working on it and you know um I, if, if anyone's listening and they don't go to the blog page john 1911.com uh freeze has a uh it's a high power. It's made by FEG, and for mm-hmm. all these years, I thought it was Turkish, but I guess FEG is Hungarian, which I didn't figure out until I looked at the slide. Um, I was like, "Holy shit, that's not even that's not even Turkish. It's Hungarian." Um, man, I just was really impressed with the pictures. I mean, you took those with your cell phone, and they look great. I mean, I just really impressed with it. It just it's a great looking gun. I've heard about this gun for years. I've never seen it. I've never seen this gun. Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a pretty nice gun. Do you have it, or does your does your dad have it at his house? I've got it sitting here on the uh, bar right next to me. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, <clears throat> um, it's uh it's one of those um, I, you know, it's one of those guns that you don't uh, break out and shoot very often. You know, but. Is it a we, is it a straight we, copy of a high power? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. I mean, parts are interchangeable. Okay. Um, and uh, it's just one of those, you know, one of those guns that you break out every couple of years and shoot, and then when you shoot it, you go, man, why don't I shoot this thing more? <laughs> you know? It, yeah. It's just, it's just, it's, it's a fun gun. It's a great shooting gun. It's just. It's it's an all around joy to shoot. It it's a is it it's a I'm looking at it with the hammer down and the, where the trigger's located. I assume it's a DASA gun. Yeah. Um, okay. And it it has a, uh, a you know a decocker on it. And you know the. Um, The high power copies that they brought in, I mean, they they brought them in for, I don't know, I want to think, you know, 10 or 15 years over a, over a span of time. And they brought in several different models. So there's a lot of them that are different. You know, I mean, they're they're all high power copies, but like mine has a decocker. Some have thumb safeties on them. So, I mean, you know, it's. Um, <clears throat> some are uh, essay only. I mean, there's there's a whole lot of variations out there. I mean, like if you collect, I mean, like if you collected high powers, you could have a whole separate subcategory for high power clones. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm not that familiar. I mean, I I obviously know what a high power is, but I'm not I'm not down in the woods with you know in the weeds with a lot of you know the different. High power options. Um, you know, I just didn't even know. I, I didn't know there was a lot of companies making knockoffs. I mean, I know there's the Browning high powers, and you'll see like Belgian high powers versus 
you know, I don't know, non-Belgian high power. I don't even know what, but you know, you, you'll see them when they're listed for sale, like on Gunbroker, real Belgian high power as opposed to, I guess, whatever. So, mm-hmm. well, yeah, and you know, and uh, and the uh, man, there's just like I said, there's just all kinds of variety when when you come when you come down to the. Uh, To the uh, high power. I mean, you know, you can even get into the, uh, uh, you know, Nazi marked high powers, and I mean, because you know the the Germans uh, captured the plant and started producing them for themselves. Yeah. You know, so, so yeah, I mean, there, there's the high power. I mean. I I guess the high power collectors that are out there today are are old are all old guys. I mean, you know, years ago the high powers were very very collectible. I mean, there was a there was a huge collectible market for them because of the, all the different variations and you know, I mean, you know, I mean the militaries that have used them, the Canadian military, the British military. I mean, you know, just the, well, the all Brits the, just stopped using it a few years ago. They switched to the Glock 17. You know, so I mean, you know, it's just, I mean, there's there's a lot of different variations. Uh, you know, the high power is a fantastic, uh, it's a fantastic weapon. You know, it's it's suffers under the uh, same problem that a That'll, you know, like your 1911 and a lot of your older guns have, you know, it's just age is its biggest issue. I mean, you know, it's it's a fine platform, but, eh, you know, technology has passed it up. Yeah, I had it's a is that a are those all aluminum frame or do they make all steel versions of that? No, nah, they're they're all steel. Oh, they are. OK, I, yeah. I, I assumed I don't know why I just assumed there'd be a, a aluminum frame one. Um, I, was, I don't know of anyone that <clears throat> that's made an aluminum framed high power. Well, with that being I've said, never owned, I've never owned a high power. What the hell do I know? You know, with that being said, you know, someone's going to pull up, you know, some some crazy high power with an aluminum frame, you know. Um, but um, no, I hey, look. I mean, the the you can still get high powers. I now look, you're you're. AIM had a bunch that came in from like the an Israeli police department that I I was eyeballing there for a while. Yeah, I mean the the thing with um the high power, some of them are bringing man, some of them are bringing big bucks because because of what they are. You know, again, you know, like a Nazi mark type power is bringing huge money. Yeah. Well, um. Yeah, you know, but but you can still you can still pick up high powers at a pretty reasonable price. You know, and and I strongly suggest anyone who doesn't have a high power of some, some sort should uh should pick one up. I mean they're they're worth having if you can get one at a decent price that's in within your budget, I'd definitely pick one up. They're you know, look, is it a gun you're gonna to want to carry, you know, 24 7 is your everyday carry probably not but man you know just to have a gun to throw in the gun safe to take out with you when you go shooting definitely worth having well i have an i have an old boss he's a retired you know swat commander and all that and he um he doesn't carry high powers anymore he may have at one point back in the 70s and 80s but because he's got them he keeps one. He's got a little sports car, and he keeps in his retirement car. He keeps a high power with like a fuck ton of magazines in the center console of his little sports car. I've mentioned this on the podcast before, you know. And that way, you know, if he, you know, because he's not going to carry, he doesn't keep a rifle in this car. I mean, like if his truck, he would have you know rifles and stuff. But it's a little sports car, so his argument is, if I should need a gun with more firepower. I've got a high power with, I don't know, he's got like five, six, seven magazines and some little thing in the center console of his car. 
Yeah, yeah. well, you know, you if know. he if he decides to drop a J frame in his pocket when he goes to the store and you know, and and the the the, the freaking uh, Russian Spesnets paratroopers start floating down, uh, you know, instead of uh, crying Wolverine and grabbing his J frame, he's just got to grab his console gun. Yeah, you know, and, and I think part of the argument was he didn't go out and spend the money on this, but he already owned the gun and it wasn't in rotation. He's not using it. It's like, oh, what the hell? I need, I wouldn't mind having some firepower in my little ass car. Eh, mm-hmm. I got this high power. I like the high power. It's a cool gun. I got some magazines. What the hell? And you know what? That's the thing. Why spend good money when you've already got stuff tied up that's just sitting there? It, exactly. You know, that's where I guess, and I, you know, a guy like me, I need to be real careful with this because you know i and you're not really susceptible to this freeze but it's a mistake that i can make a lot Uh, you know i like guns when i look at guns well there's two types of guns we've got guns that are reference guns in the armory that we use for training or whatever just for familiarization and just having them but then we've got guns that you know for me I want a gun that I can shoot a lot, put thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds through it, and I, I have an idea of how it's going to hold up. Well, the average person who may, you know, who maybe even consider himself or herself a gun guy or gun girl may not shoot eight to twelve thousand rounds a year <clears> through a gun, most- <clears throat> and they just want a pocket gun. They don't need some complicated bullet. You know, they just want some gun they can have if it, it if it'll shoot five times. You know, if it'll shoot five times and get the job done, you know, it, it's good enough for them. I mean, is it the is it optimal? Well, nothing's ever optimal. You know, no. If you're if you're planning on needing a handgun, you should bring your damn rifle. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, who doesn't want to have their belt fed in their trunk? You know, for when the shit hits the fan. But that's not really practical either. Now, is it? You know, you basically you have to um, use what you have. You know, but. And and I've been an advocate of this for a long, long time. You know, I don't believe in putting your, you know, your 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 Scar 16 in your trunk is your uh, is your truck gun. I don't believe in in throwing that much money in something that's going to be in your truck that or your car that you know that that's susceptible to weather conditions that can get stolen. Uh, you know, you're in an accident. Um, and they throw your ass in the squad and take you to the hospital. Well, guess what? You know, your record driver just has a new Scar 16, you know. Um, I have a but, story about that, but go ahead. Um, you know, that's why, um, you know, a, a gun like, um, you know, like an SKS is a perfect truck gun. Okay. One, it's affordable. It doesn't cost too much money, and two, you can accessorize the shit out of it. You can put, you can put, uh, you know, thirty round uh, magazines on it. Um, you can put different, you know, like folding stocks. I mean, you know, you can, you can accessorize it, and you can do that on the cheap. And yet, it's a gun that if it does happen to disappear, you know, yeah, you got numbers, you know, you'll report it stolen and all that stuff. But, you know, from personal experience, as well as me, that, you know, you report a gun stolen, you may or may not get it back. And if you do get it back, conditions probably going to be so messed up, you're not going to want it anyway. Yeah, we really can't go into go into my situation for various reasons. But, yeah, I, I had stuff coming back 10 years later. Mm-hmm. Um, in well, all kinds have, of condition. But we're I, not. I don't want to. I don't want to go down the road on this too much on the podcast because it, what's going to happen? Freeze! It's going to start bullshit, and we're just going to get a bunch of. We're going to get a bunch of bullshit comments on it. I don't. I, I'm. I'm warning you. We don't want to go down it too much because you'll regret it. You'll spend two days arguing with it on the internet with people. No, no, no. I won't. It's called the delete button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my days of spending days arguing with people on the internet are over. Oh, dude, let me tell you. Let me tell you something. This happened. I made I made this comment on Facebook, which is you know interesting considering I'm about to say. Look, Facebook right now is basically the internet for most people, and I get it. But I do a fair I look, I do a fair amount of testing and observation on our social media, and. I have come to realize that, for example, 
you write something up for for the blog or I write something up for the blog. We publish it on the blog and then we throw it out on our social media properties. It's surprising how many people will come in with opinions and comments on a post on, on, for example, on Facebook, and you can tell they never actually read the fucking blog. Oh no, Ed, shit! We've talked about this time and time again over the years. Mm-hmm. People, people, look. This has nothing to do with us. I was reading a comment on Facebook. It has nothing to do with us. It wasn't our content. It wasn't our page or anything like that. And it was. Uh, you know, it was a political post, and some guy rolled in, and he had a two-paragraph post. And the first paragraph was, you know, Trump's this, Trump's that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then the second paragraph was, nah, I'm just joking and messing with all my left-wing liberal friends, blah, blah, you know. And he was a Trump supporter. And a couple hundred comments on the post, most of them were like, oh, you had me for a minute, and you know, blah. But man, without fail. There was probably a dozen posts in there where it's like, oh, you're a piece of shit, blah, blah. And it's like, ah, you read the first sentence of the post and just immediately went to typing, didn't you? You know, I mean, and it wasn't even you had to click a link to read an article. It was just there. Oh, that's interesting. So they didn't really yeah, click a link. It put, Literally, they read three they or read four the- words. Of a and post Im- and immediately went to blasting on the guy. They didn't even read the whole post. So let me let me jump in here and make a point. Now there's people that are going to be out there, you know, listening to this and be like, "Well, you know, well your stuff's not worth reading or your stuff's not worth clicking." Well, you know, eh, okay. I've got the traffic that shows otherwise. First of all, but here's the second thing: people don't realize, and Facebook is aware of this as well. And this is why you're even seeing a lot of supposedly like the fake news stuff like ah they're going to go after fake news and all this facebook is scared to death of one thing they are scared to death that their social media property is going to turn into twitter because twitter's there's a lot of people on twitter but twitter's basically dead it's it has no value nobody will buy twitter twitter's decided to you know pull their head out of their ass and try to maybe change a few things but you know, like all these social media things and apps pop up and either they're successful or they're not successful. But Twitter just kind of is on life support and just kind of stays there because you get on Twitter. As we published a Twitter, I refused to do it for a long time, but it was like, well, we'll publish to it because we publish everything else and just whatever happens, happens. There is nothing. All these people do on Twitter is just whack the shit out of each other. And it. It becomes an echo chamber of nobody wants to even listen to it. Nobody wants to read it or be a part of it. And Facebook is quickly becoming unmanageable for most people. You're going to see a push away from Facebook, and people are either going to migrate to something else, or they're going to you're going to see a, a push. You know, people are going to move off of Facebook and more in the podcasting, or they're going to move off of Facebook back on the blogs. You're going to there, there's there's an issue here. It's a bigger issue that's beyond the scope of this podcast and our business. But since I run our social media, it's a huge problem. And you know, we'll just go where the people are at. And I'm seeing more and more and more people leave Facebook. Well, yeah, exactly. You know, the, I mean, they're they're. <sighs> Look at all the people that are like, you know, you know a lot of kids in Alfreeze. Okay, look. They're all on Instagram. They're all on Snapchat. None of them, none of them use Twitter. Yeah, they all have Twitter accounts, but Twitter is, I mean, and honestly, with a lot of these young kids, Facebook's not their go-to account either. It's not. They're not. A lot of them aren't on Facebook anymore. I mean, it's all Instagram and things like that. They don't use Twitter. Who uses Twitter are, you know... I don't want to say famous. I guess more people with that are more famous that, you know, I'm a, I'm a musician or a, a movie star and I can open a Twitter account and I've got a million followers, you know, uh, 48 hours after I open the account because, you know, I've got public notoriety. Those people use Twitter. The kids today, they don't use Twitter. They don't give a shit about Twitter. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, they don't, you know, and it's, you know, it's just like, you know, big picture state of the social media, you know, and we see it. And that's kind of where, you know, we hit it a couple years ago. Remember when we first started all this freeze and guys would come in and they obviously don't agree with us on pretty much anything. But, you know, they were here and we would have these long, drawn out conversations or try to have civilized debates. And even if they were on the on the verge of getting testy, we would talk them back from the edge. And, you know, and we kind of, we, do you remember, we used to pride ourselves. We had, I don't know how many people we had on our Facebook page, had we had never banned anybody. Do you remember what that went on? We were like open for like two years and we were like, we've never banned anybody. Yeah. I mean, at one, at one point our ban list was, you know, it's like, well, we had banned four people. You know, and we've got, you know, 35,000 followers, you know, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and then it was just like, you know, okay, a couple things happens when you have a, I don't like to ban people policy. If you don't manage your social media and you just let people run amok and post, it's like, yeah, whatever. But if you interact with them. What happens is you piss them off and then they complain to Facebook and then we get put in Facebook jail and we ate up all this freaking time. You know, you eat up a couple hours dealing with this douche nozzle and then he, you know, he cries foul. We get put in Facebook jail and social media is shut down for 24 hours. Well, not shut down, but we can't access it for 24, 48, 72 hours. And Honestly, at the end of the day, it's easier just to ban their dumb ass and be done with it. Well, here's something that a lot of people don't understand, and we had to learn it too. Okay, if a guy rolls into our page and he's like foul, filth, foul, filth, filth, foul, filth, and all this crazy shit, and we don't delete that post and ban it, if that keeps going on, we end up getting kicked by Facebook on a community standards violation. Facebook can see that we are not quote moderating our or curating our moderating our our um, our our readers, and it's um they basically are like your violation of community standards, and they put you in Facebook jail. How many people do we ban a week now? Freeze. Would you uh, guess? I don't know. I just banned a guy ten minutes ago. Really? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, you know, because it, it's, you know, people just don't realize it's just, we'll just do, do whatever ban you because, and then what really pushed it over the edge is we started realizing there were a lot of these profiles that were actually fake profiles and what they, oh. they're not real people. They were either like, it's like a, an interest group or a political action committee and they've got a hundred profiles for one person and they're all going. And this one person's going out and just come and just flooding stuff to make it look like, you know, like, you know, it's the same people that burn half the, you know, town down in Berkeley. They want you to think that they represent everybody and they don't. Well, and the other thing is I used to go in and cross reference them with our customer list and about 99% of the people we'd go in there and ban had never bought a thing from us. And it's like, okay, um, you're coming in, you know, you're, you're doing a, a drive by post, you know, it's a hit post. Um, you're not a customer. You're not one of our regulars. I mean, hell, you're a lot of a these fan guys are doing, you don't belong a lot, here. A, a lot of these, a lot of these people aren't, haven't even liked our page. They're not even a follower of us. Yeah. When did and that happen? When did you be used to, when did, did you be able to comment on a page and not like it? That hasn't <laughs> always been the case. I don't know. But, you know, I mean, so I started I started noticing a trend and it's like, OK, they're 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 you know, we've got, you know, over a quarter million fans and this douchebag's not one of them uh, gone. <laughs> you know, yeah, it, it's like, you know, I mean, at least if you like the page, I'm willing to give you a chance you know, I this I, we were going to talk, uh, but you know, we're just kind of just you know free rolling here. The last 
publication that I made to the podcast was I do some podcast only content, <laughs> you know, just occasionally if there's something I need to, you know, we need to talk about or do whatever. And I did a podcast thing talking about holster makers. And mm-hmm. it, it, you know, we did, a, I did an armory chat. I was talking about holsters. You know, I, we got, you know, I've had issues with the uh, AIWB holster. I cracked it, cracked it bad. A couple cracks were in it, apparently. And, you know, and went through the process of replacing it. And, you know, and then I just, you know, was in the armory and we had some time and I, I did a quick little video. And for days, days, people that are not our fans, they're not our regulars, they don't really care what we do, but these guys, they're, you know, they all coming in and they're all shit talking, all these holster companies, and you come to find out every single one of them, they make holsters themselves. And what Ah. happens is they all, a lot of these guys coming in, they make their own goddamn holsters, and they basically want to shit talk other people, and then basically think that they're going to promote their business. And it's just like, you know, fuck you, guy. I mean, it was just—it's so bullshit. It's like, you know, it, it, dude. Every time we talk, have you noticed? Every time we mention holsters, like you know, even just in passing, your favorite holsters or my favorite holsters or this old holster we used to do. A bunch of guys fucking roll in, and they're dropping the links to their little neighborhood holster business, and it doesn't take five minutes until they're shit-talking everybody else. Well, look, um, I hate these fucking guys. Most of you holster guys are jackasses. Uh, it's the, it's the, it's, you're literally the, I mean, I know there's a bunch of people like, I make a holster and fuck you. You know, if you're not on our social media shit talking other holster companies, I'm not talking about you. But if you are, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, here's the thing. Um, there's holster companies out there that I absolutely hate. But in any posts on John1911.com, on any Facebook post, on any podcast, have you ever heard me mention a company by name that I hate? No, you haven't because I don't badmouth them. Um, I won't buy their product. You for may disagree reason. with something. You and I have a lot of disagreements, and we're oh, usually yeah. disagreeing on price, and we're disagreeing. Yeah, well, because we come at it from different perspectives. You come at it from yeah. the real world, and I come at it from the tactical ninja douchey world, was yeah. you would say. Yeah. But um, these guys will roll in, and you know, let me get, let me give some a bunch of people a bunch of advice, unsolicited. It is free, free of charge. I don't care what business you're in. I, dude, I don't care if you make tactical freaking door stops. Make the biggest tactical to- door stop business you can. If you want to build the biggest building or, you know, the the, I, the the biggest castle in in in, you know, in the world, build your castle. Don't go around tearing other castles down. I, I want a tactical door stop. Yeah, you know, maybe you know like a transformer that like, you know, opens up and turns like a spider and jumps on someone's face. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually funny. I that reminds me of an old joke. I'm sure a lot of people have heard it. Um, uh, guy and his wife were in the kitchen, and the wife asked the guy, uh, "Why do you always carry your gun in the house?" And a guy looks at his wife and says, "Decepticons." She laughed. I laughed. The toaster laughed. I shot the toaster. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time. I've yeah, heard that joke. Know, yeah, it's an old joke, but man, that joke makes me chuckle every time I hear it. <laughs> she laughed. I laughed. The toaster laughed. <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, stuff. I mean, you know, it's you know, I mean, look, we're all. I mean, look, I don't care about other people. You know, other businesses. You know, look. You and I, we're so busy. We got so much stuff going on. We just want to shoot guns and have fun and do what we're doing. And if you want to be a part of what we're doing, great. Look, that's why we're not gear reviewers, okay? You know, if you see something on our blog, a product or a gun or a widget or a whatever, it's because we were interested in it and we bought it. Now, it may be a piece of crap or it may not be a piece of crap, but it's what we wanted. That's what we're doing. You know, we we don't have to. We're not into this like doing things to get ratings or doing things to get free stuff from people, or you know this 
you know, tearing other people down, you know, it, in reality because we have an interest in in selling something, you know, that we haven't disclosed, which happens a yeah. lot on the internet. Yeah. You know. Um, oh my well, god. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let me let let me just totally change directions here and uh, tell you a, a little little fun snippet that uh, I ran into yesterday. So, I get a call from a guy who says, man, I have this old 22 rifle. It's an old Remington pump. And it says it'll put shorts, longs, and long rifles in it. He said, I loaded, I loaded the, you know, the tube magazine with shorts and went to jacket and it jammed up. And I took it down and, you know, and, and he said, when I took it down, a, a part fell out of it. And he said, I can't get this thing back together. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll come over and look at it. And yesterday I had a chance to swing by and take a look at it. So what this rifle is, it's uh, it's it's not a Remington Model 12 22 pump. It's it looks just like a Model 12, but it's an earlier. I I haven't really tracked it down. It doesn't say Model 12. It's like it's like a Remington 1908 pump. And anyway, the, the, if anyone's familiar with like the Model 12s, you know it's got a, uh, a thumb screw bolt on the side of the receiver. And if you take it out, it <clears throat> it pulls the buttstock and the trigger group out of it. Well, what the guy did is when he pulled it apart, the bolt fell out and he couldn't get the bolt back in. So I went ahead and put it back together for him and got it running, tried to uh, tried to chamber a short, and it immediately jammed. Same problem. So I had to take it back apart, clear it out, you know, and uh, then we loaded it with some long rifles and it works fine. So I didn't have time to mess with it, and I didn't have time to get any pictures or anything like that which I will eventually get. But okay. um, I, uh, you know, I just put it together and got it running for him. And um, it's just a little, uh, little, little barn gun, you know, for shooting, you know, groundhogs and shit like that. But, uh, sure. but anyway, um, I need to find out why it's not feeding shorts first off. Um, but is it second, like a lifter or something or? Uh, you know, I don't know. I didn't have time to really, you know, get into it and, and look at it. I mean, this thing, you know, I mean, the gun's well over 100 years old, and it was it was pretty cruddy inside. So it just may need some cleaning and lubing and, you know, I don't know. I have to play with it. But, you know, I've got other projects on the table. I told him, I said, right now it's working. I said, but as soon as I get a chance, you know, and that chance may be a couple months down the road, but as soon as I get a chance, I'll, I'll take it and look at it. You know? Sure. Yeah. I mean, you're a resident gunsmith, so we yeah. know when we, you know, we've decided that we want to st start showing more of that kind of what we've got going on. Yeah. Well, I figured it would have been great content, but like we were, we were, uh, we uh, were in his, we were in his barn. It was dark. We were, you know, we were using <laughs> well, the you're lucky you didn't the drop a part. You know, we're, we're using the lighting in the barn, which wasn't great. And it's like, you know what? I could have snapped a couple of pictures, but they would have been crappy pictures. And it was like, you know what? I'll just, I'll, I'll just come back and do this later. Oh, dude, <laughs> did you see the video I posted of the Spas 12 that came into the armory and I broke it? It immediately like fell apart. You were, uh, you were, you were, you know, you were work, you know, you were not available and it was yeah, just I, like, fuck. I, I, I saw the post, but honestly, I haven't watched the video. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like racking it and messing with it, looking at it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm like 10 seconds from like turning on the camera to do a quick armory chat on an entirely different subject. And now all of a sudden I hear a clink, clink inside the gun. And I'm like, what the hell? Is something rolling around in here? Nothing <laughs> like you to spend too much money on a broken gun. <laughs> oh God. So anyway, it um I haven't up it I guess I don't it, it looked like a, a lot of people thought it was a follower to the mag two, but you can tell it's to the buffer. There's some kind of buffer system. And mm -hmm. uh the next day a bunch of hard plastic like yellowy Amber piss looking plastic fell out of the started you know crumbling out of the gun. So obviously that forty year old 
buffer rubber thing has, you know, disintegrated because this gun looks like it's never been hardly fired. And, um, you know, it was just funny, you know, just, you know. Stuff. Well, strangely enough, the French. <clears throat> Actually, the, you know what? I always thought the Spas was French, too, but it's Italian. Think about that one. Really? Yep, it's a Spas. Yeah. Tw- is Fra- Franchi is, uh, is an Italian company. Huh. I thought it was a French gun, too, but it's not. Mm-hmm. It's Italian. Well, that just totally blows away what I was going to say. You know what? Uh, You know what? Because the French, the the French have, like, the French use a lot of polymer parts. I mean, like, look at like the the forty nine fifty six. You know, it's got that big polymer bolt handle knob, and you know, and uh, you know, and and tech. Well, but okay, in this case, the Italians didn't. Technology changes. You know, a polymer. From thirty, forty years ago, obviously doesn't stand up to the test of time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but in, in any case, that's no big deal. It's just getting a new part and putting it in. Yeah, you know, it's um, I think there's somebody that's I think because the sh- and part of the reason why we got the shotgun is because there, you know, I mean. In the in the in in look, the in look, the real it, world, they're not practical guns. There's a lot of problems with them. Just even like the man, like feeding. Unless you've run a spa shotgun, you're you're not going to believe what I'm about to tell you. But you know, shotguns run out of ammo pretty quick, and so you got to keep feeding ammo into them. And the spas twelve to even just drop ammo into it is a cluster. And but look, the thing the, is, the, the kids spa, buy these the, guns. The Spaz 12 is a cool gun. I mean, is it it's an a impract- movie gun? It's a movie gun. Yeah, exactly. It's a cool gun. And here's the is thing. It, is it a practical gun? No. no. Is, it, is it a gun I would want to run? No. But, man, it is kind of a cool gun. But here's you know? the thing. I was even in the video. The thing is, some kid <laughs> shows up with one of these guns and hands it to me. I wouldn't even know how to open it. That's the thing. It's like I. it's incumbent upon me to at least be able to you know, clear one, operate one, Understand the manual of arms because the manual of arms on a Spaz 12 shotgun is not like any other pump shotgun that's out there. They are that's that's the they're they're crazy different, and that's why we got it for that reason for as a reference yeah. gun in the library. And the thing is, it never fails. Kids buy these. I mean, you, I mean, I remember in an old job. I, I won't go into it. But I remember an old job. This guy, he was a contractor. And um, he was doing some training, and um, he was going back to Afghanistan. And I'll be goddamn if he didn't whip out a Spaz 12 shotgun. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I didn't even I didn't even look at it. I mean, this guy was like, you know, this guy was in his 30s. And, uh, you know, I guess I, I, I've never seen Jurassic Park or any of these dinosaur movies. I guess the Spaz 12 is in all these movies. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I haven't seen any of them either. Yeah. So you know, you know, and you know, shotgun. One thing that's nice about shotguns is they all, t- as long as you, twelve, they all shoot the same ammo. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean. It's not like you're. Yep. I mean, it's that's the nice for us as an arm. You know, it, they're they're easy. To, they're easy to support. It's not you know, you get some crazy ass gun with a crazy ass caliber. You know, that hasn't been around in a hundred years, and then you got to get you know, the special ammo, and then even then you got to you know like deal with turn it. You know, you got to turn the brass and put a ridge in it, or you got to neck it down, or you got to fire form it. The thing is, 12-gauge shotgun, as long as it can handle black powder, a 12-gauge shotgun from 100 years ago and a 12-gauge shotgun from 50 years in the future, all it's the same ammo. Yeah, 12-gauge is a 12-gauge. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, the nice know. thing about them, because they're just easy. Yeah. And, and I, I, I like easy, you know, so. Um, I'm a big fan of easy. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you know, just an interesting fun fact is you can actually buy a detachable wooden stock for the Spaz 12. Well, you know what? That's a good point. Um, part of the reason why <coughs> is we, we, we have one, and we didn't pay a lot of money for it. And I, I suspect part of the reason why we did not is it doesn't have – the one that we have uh, doesn't have that crazy folding stock on it with, like, the loop and the this because it's like sheet metal. Yeah. And th- that, you know, and again, you know, the gun is so cool looking because it's so, and in all the movies, it has that crazy stock. 
But that yeah. stock is a nightmare to shoot. And at the end of the day, we are, you know, we run a reference collection for, you know, for manual of arms training that you can't shoot that damn stock. That 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 stock with that 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 sheet metal up against your cheek is a <laughs> nightmare. Yeah. That's what so we found one that was just it's a it's a hard plastic of stock. I didn't know there's a wood wood one. What, yeah, what the, is it a modern one? Um I don't know. I mean is it like cuz there's I mean I've looked for like 2 seconds. There is apparently cuz again, again cuz the kids love this gun. There's a whole group of people in the United States that they I mean it, you know like there's like 1911 forums oh dude there's a group of people that are that are high that you know that are high point people and all they do is own and shoot high points look yeah. there's a group for everybody <laughs> yeah well there's apparently a group for the spas people and i believe they're going to be the people that we get the uh, buffer replacement buffer from i have to do it cuz i've got i've got some stuff going on i'll have to deal with it in a few weeks but but yeah i mean so yeah. i mean i assume you found somebody it's. I mean, is it a, is it a nice? Is there a reason why we would want to have this stock? No, no, not at all. Okay, I was just. I was, I was. I was just pointing out a, a little fun fact that how they much, actually. How, you know what? How much is it? I have no clue. Oh, okay, I thought you were looking at one on the internet. But at the price. no, no, but no, but what what it does is is it it you, basically um the variation we have has a pistol grip and a buttstock on it, and then you can get the pistol grip with the folding sheet metal stock. This does away with the pistol grip. It turns it into like a traditional, like an 870 or a 500 without a pistol grip. You know, it, it's See, a I'll wooden tell you what, stock. If, if we had found one in that format, I would have taken it. Oh, dude, I, you know what? Um, but I'm not going to spend money to, to convert it. No, I don't even. I don't even. I don't even know how much one of these would cost. But I've seen pictures of the spas with a with a traditional wooden buttstock on it. Um, without the, you know, it, it eliminates the pistol grip. And uh, yeah, you know, I don't know what I feel about pistol and, grips but, on shotguns. But, well, I prefer them. I mean, I run a but, pistol grip. You know what? Grip. That's true. I forgot about that. That's what you run all the uh, time. Uh, that's what I run all the time. Um, but, but with that being said, the manual of arms on a spas may not be near as bad if you had a traditional wooden butt stock on it without the pistol grip. Think about that. Yeah. Think the, about the, think about if you were running the spas the way you'd run a five hundred or an eight seventy. The, the the problem with the spas is their stuff, and again, I can tell because I don't think you've ever touched one or like actually try to run one. Like you, like literally, like what the hell is it? Like the like the L, the uh, the lifter is locked in position unless you throw a lever. If the gun is if the pump is locked back, you gotta when you want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, chamber load something, you gotta push a button to get it to go forward. I mean, it's got all these extra things that you and each time you want to, like, I mean, it's they're they're kind of a pain in the dick. Like a normal shotgun, you can just thumb thumb rounds into it. Yeah, you gotta push yeah. a button, thumb one, push a button, thumb one, push, and then it's like a different button to do this. And I mean, you're crawling all over that gun like a guy yep. like Spider Man. Doesn't the spas have like a funky gate that flips down on the uh, where the loading port is? Yeah, it's got. Well, it's got the. Um, it. I mean, it's got the. It. The thing is, the gun locks itself. You know, locks. You know, it. it well, here's here. Look, I mean, I, look. I'm not an expert on the spas. You know, we're going to pull it out and we'll do some stuff with it. It'll be at least a month because we. I got a lot going on right now. We had a guy roll in. He was a cop. I think down in Mississippi, he was like, oh, yeah, I had one of those, you know, on patrol. And I was like, man, what department was that? Turns yeah. out it's a small department where they buy their own guns. So he yeah, went out yeah. and he bought the Terminator. Again, apparently, he said this gun was in Terminator. And that's, that's actually right. a movie I had seen. And I was like, you know what? That I think I remember this gun in the movie. I asked him and I said, hey, how, you, you know, how did you run this? When you were on patrol in your patrol car, I mean, did you run as a pump or a semi-automatic? Because I, I think I knew what the answer was going to be, and he was like, I ran it semi-automatic. 
And that's that's what I think with these is going to end up being the thing. A lot of people like to goof with them and do all the pump stuff and change it. The reality is set them in semi and leave them. Because <laughs> yeah. I think you run this gun in a pump, it's it's a... I mean, it's it's. I mean, I'm telling you what, dude. It's like Edward Scissorhands, crazy, like like. I mean, like Liberace fingers all over this gun, trying to get this thing to work. I mean, it's unreal. <laughs> wow, I can't believe you just you, use. I, I can't I, believe you just use the term Liberace fingers, <laughs> dude. I don't know. I mean, who, who plays a piano? I mean, I don't know. Does it, does anyone rock and roll even play piano anymore? I mean, um, uh, Alicia Keys. I mean, yeah, you know what the hell? I don't know. Um, first off, first off, Alicia Keys is not rock and roll. Okay, you know let's what? just get that you know shit what? straight you right know now. What? Let me tell you something about Alicia Keys. That girl can sing, buddy. Whatever, whatever. She's not a bad looking girl either. I, who cares? She's a good looking girl. I just, so, you know, I just, so, I, just, so I, just what? I just ignore, I just ignore her opinions on pretty much everything I believe in. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So what? Madonna was a good looking girl before she started getting investigated <laughs> until she started bombing the White House. Yeah. You know, here's here's the funny part. Check this out. Madonna be she's at you know, she's in Washington at this big event, but it's put on basically by the people that support Hamas in the United States. Yeah. She talks about bombing the White House. We talk she nothing will happen to her. We mentioned bombing the White House in this podcast. This podcast will get beamed all out on the internet and eventually some kind of security system that that you know that 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 you know that siphons everything in and scans everything will pick up the phrase bomb the white house in this podcast and they'll have to do mm-hmm. a double take on us you know and yeah. we're not even we're we're not even the ones talking about it yeah that's how fucked up everything is yeah well you know Dude, I'm going to tell you what. I, what I'm going to do when when I'm back in town and, and doing some stuff, I am going to turn on a video camera and I'm going to hand you the Spaz 12 and videotape. Your, you like, I'm like, okay, here you go, brother. Go ahead, you know, check it, whatever. And it'll be like, now load it, shoot it, and do whatever. And dude, it's going to be, it's going to be like a monkey helping a football. No, I'm going gonna, gonna I'm, I'm, I'm I'm to load it and run it like a champion. You're you going to be you're like, what the fuck? You- and, and that's because while you're gone for two weeks, I'm going to watch like 50 YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no cheating. <laughs> hey, it's not cheating if you win. You know what? Uh, you know what? We'll go ahead and bring this home because this kind of is, we kind of, uh, Kind of all over the place here with the with this podcast talking about guns and then trolls on the internet. Facebook, you know, Facebook's got a problem, but Facebook, Facebook, you know what their solution is? Facebook's next big thing. Uh, what's that? They're going all video. Oh, I mean, you know, they're they're leaning in that direction now. It's it, and it's mm-hmm. a smart move because that's where everyone's going. That's why we're doing all the videos. Hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, does we have to? I mean, well, I mean, you know, we can. We got all we got. To, you know, and the thing is, it's you know, there's a learning curve for us. I mean, look, I mean, to open up this podcast. I'm like, dude, I loved your pictures of your brown of your of your of your browning your your Hungarian high power. Well, the reason I'm saying that is, look, there was a time when you would send me pictures of a gun and it looked like a snail in the bottom of like a. I mean, I mean, it, it, it looked it looked like a couple coal miners or something. You could well, I mean, you could couldn't see anything. Well, that's when I was using my iPhone before I got my uh, Galaxy. Oh, okay, you know what? That's that's actually technically true. But you it know, is it, technically true. There is a, there <laughs> is a learning curve. You know, we've all had to kind of adjust. You can't teach old dog new tricks, and we're, you know, we're uh, we're doing some videos because you know it used to be videos were hard, and now we're kind of getting getting a process in place, and you know we've got. I mean, we've got all the guns. And the lifestyle, we just have to kind of turn on goddamn cameras. So we're we're figuring it out. Yeah. We're trying. It's it's yeah, you know it's getting there. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, I mean, as Facebook goes all video, Facebook has decided that they don't like how YouTube is basically going to be the next. You know, YouTube is the is the new TV, and you know, and to your credit. Again, I got you know. I run all the social media. Like I run like the backbone of the social media, um, like technical stuff. Like if something breaks on social media, Freeze doesn't fix it. I fix it. But it was Freeze years ago. Freeze has been like, we got to start doing 
podcasting. We got to start doing video. We got to start doing and you, and I you know and I fought and whined and bitched and you know and you've been right every time. You, I mean, you've been ahead of the curve by years. If I had listened to you when you first were talking about some of this stuff, we would be two years ahead. Well, yeah, but you know, man, whatever. We we are where we are. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. So yeah, but you know, I mean, you know, I mean that that that's all well and good, you know. Um, but the truth is. We might have been two years ahead of the curve, but the way technology advances, the equipment we would have had to use two years ago was yeah. not as good as the equipment that's out there today, and it cost it, it cost ten times more. Yeah, we'd have spent ten G's just in, and that was kind of the problem too. You know, we're you know we're not we're not you know we're not. I mean, I hate. <laughs> you know, I, I, sometimes we're too <laughs> honest. Sometimes we're, you know, we're way too honest. We're not dorks, <laughs> you know. And what I mean by that is, dude, there's a lot of guys that are okay. Well, let, they're, okay, they're, let, they're on the well, internet with guns, and the truth is, they're more dorks than they are gun people. Okay. And you know, and it's just like, okay, but let me let me throw this out there. You take a lot of the guys that are doing gun videos on YouTube. Okay. Most of it I can't stand. Well, that, that doesn't matter. It doesn't. It's, okay. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> they have <clears throat> two or three GoPros, or they have a bigger camera. You know, they have a couple all GoPros. These HD and then cameras get, you and know, all this. And, and, and that's fine. But the truth is... When they film all this stuff with their GoPros and their HD cameras and all that stuff, then they have to take it and then they have to download it all. They have to edit it and they have to put it together into a viewable video. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just the way you got to do things. The problem with that is for us is all they're doing is shooting a video putting putting it together they're not running a blog they're not running podcasts they're not working you know i mean yeah, the, the thing, thing yeah the thing is where they take 10 hours to produce a video from shooting the video to editing it to posting it we don't have 10 hours to do videos because i mean we yeah we, we did, have the shooting the video cannot get get in the way of the of uh, the other stuff we've got going on where we make money Exactly. So, so we have to devise a way where we can do this quick, but yet put out quality video, which honestly, two years ago, I mean, we got GoPro cameras. We never use them because the truth is the technology two years ago just wasn't there. There is technology now that allows us to be able to put out quality video without spending a day just editing and producing. You yeah. Know. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, it, uh, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, and, and a lot of this is too, is because when we first started all this, you know, we, we weren't really blog heavy. We were actually, when we started this, we didn't even have a blog, but what ended up happening was things were becoming so anti-gun we created a John 1911 blog because we needed a quote safe space. We needed a you know a place to tactically retreat to when Facebook whacked all of us or YouTube whacks all of us. And that's yeah. the thing. When we first started doing videos, I refused to upload to YouTube at all, just out of principle. But now I've changed my mind because that's where everybody's at. But here's the thing: every video that we post to YouTube, we actually pay to host it on a server that we control and then on our blog page you know you can if if we were to disappear and you're like man whatever happened to them guys you know we're just gone just go to john 1911.com everything that disappeared is there the videos yes. we are not dependent on anybody and and that's where that's where we own the content 100% Whereas yeah, I mean, on they, YouTube you don't own shit you don't own shit and here and here's the thing too look i mean you know we'll talk about like we were talking about, like you know, Hickok Forty Five and Nut and Fancy. Those most people that are in our genre know who those two people are. 
And I remember Hickok got shut down for a while, then he was back up, and then he was down, he's back up. And I think he made a comment. He's been making videos for like eight years. And I yeah, think, it's a long time. And nothing fancy is in the same boat. And here's what a lot of people don't understand. Like, just like, you know, look at nothing, look at nothing fancy. Okay. His videos are, you know, I don't know, 45 minutes. And then he's got all this stuff for him just to take all of that content. If, if YouTube were to just, just bam, just slam that door on him and it's all gone, it would take him months just to write the descriptions for all the videos as he's re-uploading them. I mean, that would be a full-time oh, dude, job might, for a year, it, for six months. It, I was going to say, it might take him a year. He's got thousands and thousands of hours of video. Well, and that's not, even, count, that's not even counting the, the, the time it would take to re-upload the physical video to a server. Like all yeah. those videos, you have to go in and you got to describe all the videos. You got to tag all the stuff. You got to make sure it's all correct. And then... You know, if he doesn't have notes or documentation, here's the thing. I always make it a point because I've kind of learned from other people's mistakes. You know, I make sure that I've got copies of everything. You know, if we had started this eight years ago, we'd be in the same boat as, you know, nothing fancy. I mean, here's the thing. Sure. That, that boy's ass is hanging in the breeze. And, mm -hmm. and no one talks about it. I'm sure he knows it because he's got nowhere to go right now yeah oh yeah i mean you know it, it would be devastating to him because mm -hmm. i mean like i said it, it would take him a year to re-upload everything and that's just physically uploading it that's not even you know i mean think of hey nothing you got to re-upload re episode 47 of of whatever pod or whatever video that you did in 2011 do you even remember what the hell that we've got let's say he even has the video which i'm sure he does do you even remember what the hell the description of all that is or do you have to spend an hour watching the video just so you remember what the hell's in the video oh better yet hey about seven years ago you did a, re a gear review on an ajax uh, model 12 folding back knife can you tell me where that's at? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, no. You know, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, so I mean, you know, we're obviously living, you know, on the shoulders of giants in some way, but you know, we're just, you know, I mean, I, I, we tried to do this intelligently by looking at, you know, what's happened to other people. So, you know, that's, well, you know, we could probably produce a lot more video if we just produced it and threw it up on YouTube. Um, but that's not protecting ourselves or covering our ass. And again, I hate to uh, produce content that I don't own 100%. And when you throw that shit up on YouTube, basically you don't own anything. They can do whatever they want to it. Yeah. Now, I mean, we put a we put a video up on YouTube. Yeah, they can still do whatever they want to that video, but the original video in its original form and its unedited form that they can't touch and no one else can is hosted with us personally. Yeah. So, I mean, if anybody is out there wants to know what we use instead of Vimeo or YouTube, we use a service called Vimeo. And, you know, if you like to watch videos, and I'm, you know what, I'm going to have to do a post on John 1911 on how to contact us and follow us. I need to kind of really update the blog page. But, you know, a lot of people, I it took, again, because I've been having to watch videos and kind of figure a lot of this stuff out. A lot of people, because you're a big YouTube guy, the reason a lot of people use YouTube is because it's an app on their phone and it's a click away and they're they're into whatever they want to do. Well, if that's a yes. big, if that's what you prefer, if you, there's another service out there, people pay for it called Vimeo and it's an app. You can download it. You can have your channels and you can have your favorites and you can do all this other kind of stuff. But that, I mean, it doesn't have nearly as much content on it as YouTube does, but it's, it's, it's literally, it's higher quality. There's none of this crazy, like, you know, you get on YouTube. You, and here's the thing, YouTube's, you know, YouTube runs the commercials. If you don't want to watch the commercials, YouTube's doing the, you know, they intentionally slow down the load of the video. You know, they do this on purpose. They're, they're throttling the video feeds 
and then they, you know, occasionally, like a day or two later, you'll get a, you'll get an alert from YouTube saying, "Hey, are you experiencing interruptions uh, in your uh, in your feed? Sign up for YouTube Red." Because <laughs> they're tr- <laughs> seriously, and you know, and people, are, I'm telling you what, there's going to come a point, you know, when like basically, you know, a lot of people are going to get real frustrated with YouTube unless you're paying for it. Well, guess what? Come to Vimeo, come to yeah. John 1911. Yes, yeah. you, you know, because YouTube's got to make money, but you know what? We got to <clears> make money too. And if you're if we're going if you're going to see a commercial on a John nineteen eleven video, it's going to be a commercial someone's paying us for, not YouTube. Yeah. Well, and another thing is, um, uh, 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 and a lot of people don't realize this, but there are certain people out there in the YouTube community that make damn good money on advertising, you know, and and whatnot on YouTube, but. What a lot of people don't realize that, you know, guys that were making, you know, $100,000 a year, that was their sole income doing YouTube, you know, um, uh, three, four, five years ago, aren't making that money no, today. It's all, everybody, yeah, it's all, I don't, I don't I claim to understand all of it, but I know a lot of it's gone way down. I mean, yeah, uh, it's gone way, way down, you know, and I mean, you know, people that were that were actually not having to work a day job because they made enough income off of YouTube are now finding that they've got to work a day job. Yeah, I remember because um, I, you know, I was looking into some of this and because, you know, you were like, man, we got to do videos. And I'm like, oh, God, um, there was a, a story of some girl and I don't even remember who she was, but she's some little, you know. You know, anyone that's under forty to me, under thirty to me, is like a chicky girl. So you know, she's some <laughs> little chicky girl, and um, you know, she must be really popular somewhere on YouTube doing whatever it is she does. And you know, it's not porn; it's something you know she's proud of. And one of the things she was is happening to her is she's a waitress in some restaurant or diner, and she was people were shocked that you know, like. Wait a minute! You're like this huge YouTube star. What are you doing here? Why do you have a job? And she's like, people don't understand. I don't make any goddamn money. <laughs> and it's you know, and it is like, uh huh, uh huh, yeah, mm hmm, yeah, yeah. Well, it's yeah, that's the way it is. At the end you of know, the day, we- look, it's all got to be about money, doesn't it? And, you know, and you know. I guess, you know, we're, we're just kind of rambling at this point. I don't even know. We have a podcast right now. We're just kind of bullshitting, but um. You know, I well, mean, but 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 it's but look, it's a valid point, and a lot of people. I mean, I'm sure some people do understand this, but you know, a lot of people listening to us might think, oh man, these guys, you know, they they put up videos and they do a podcast. They must be rolling in the do re mi. Well, let me tell you something: uh, the videos we put up and the podcast we put up cost us money. No one pays us money. You'll notice when you watch our videos or listen to our podcast, there is no advertising in it. Yeah, we always made money from merchandising, from T-shirts, and that's coming back. We're just resetting kind of how we're doing a bunch of stuff. Yes. And, um, you know, that's so, you know, you don't have to, you know, whatever. So they're, they'll be, I get emails every day from people. What happened to your shirts? Tactical T-shirts, what happened? It, it's, it's, it's coming back, and it's going to be a little bit different, but there's going to be, you know, hopefully a lot of you will be happy. So, all right. We're going to wrap this one up because I know you're busy today, Freeze. I know you got you got some obligations today, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me. Uh, let me. Uh, oh, I guess I need to say one more thing. Uh, uh, my apologies to our audio engineer, Mitch. Apparently, I have been using the wrong name for his company the last last few weeks. <laughs> so, uh, um, Oops. yeah. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and sign us out. So this has been episode 53 of the John 1911 podcast. If you like this kind of content or want to follow what we're doing, go to our blog page. That's uh, john1911.com that's j o h n 1911.com special promotional considerations to Mitch at a and m promotions i was saying a and b i was saying a and b so now i have to remember like texas a and m um, yeah. at a and m promotions and just remember it's all about shooting guns and having fun everybody have a good day see you later <laughs>